boys and girls. So continuing on this week with a little bit of fall art, I thought it would be fun to do our own version of a Van Gogh Starry Night. Only we could make it just a little bit more kind of like Halloween. I know you enjoy Halloween. So let's take this famous painting of Van Gogh's and see if we can use line design in our in our picture. He had these Italian cypress trees. He had wavy lines to show that it was a windy night. He had these bright circles for stars. And here we have the wavy mountain line. We can do all of that. And then I'm going to show you a fun little thing we could do here instead of making just a wavy line for wind. We'll turn it into a Halloween picture. Okay? Ready? Okay, let's see. Let's start with, I'm going to put my picture over here so I can see it if I want. And um, we're going to use our crayons and start with um, the wavy line for the mountains, okay? It's a starry night, it's a little dark out there. So we're gonna use blues and maybe even black, okay? I'm gonna start with my black line. And here we go, a wavy line for the mountains. And I guess we'll just start maybe with an outline, okay? So we know where we're going. And we have the wavy line for the mountains and we have our Italian cypress trees. They come up to a point there. Cypress trees blowing in the wind can have almost any shape and he loved to include cypress trees in his pictures. Nice little wavy lines like that, okay? So those are his cypress trees. And we can fill them in because it's so dark at night, a combination of black and blue or black and dark green. That's what we'll do because the trees aren't blue. Okay, so let's go here and we make our wavy lines down through the tree like this. Lots of wavy lines and then fill in in between with green. My green is not very dark. I don't know what your green is like. So here I have a, I happen to have some old crayons that somebody gave me and, and uh, so I'm gonna use as many shades of green as I have in my box and I'm going to mix plenty of black in there too because when you're out on a dark night, you really don't see those shades of green in your tree. Let me see what shade this is. Here we go. One day I was at the Olive Garden and they had crayons for kids there. You know they do that at a lot of restaurants, right? So if you collect those crayons from restaurants, you might have more crayons in your box and sometimes they're different shades. Okay, so I'm going to add a little more black because I don't want too much green to show. I just want some green. There we go, like that. And I'm going to move on to my next tree. And use wavy lines. Those are our basic elements. Remember, we were talking about the elements of design. And these elements are used to make different shapes. So we can include them in our line designs lots of black lines i'm going to do my third tree over here with my black also and since these are trees there is no right or wrong because the trees are blowing in the wind and i'm going to add some touches of green in between and right on top of the black I want to see some color anyhow. So you don't have to make your trees all black.
there. I'm going to turn on my picture again here. My Van Gogh picture went away. If I was at school, I have one hanging up on the wall. There we go. Let's look at that again. We want to get different shades of blue now in our sky, and we want to save some white. And uh, the moon is there, some yellow and some white for the moon. There you go. And some white in between the blues to show that it's windy. Okay, so let's see how we do here. I'm going to save a yellow moon over here. A crescent moon. And it is glowing in the night. So I'm going to make some swirly lines like this. Swirly lines in yellow. And I'm going to leave some white. And I'm going to make some yellow stars. I'm going to make yellow swirls. Some big, some little. Some stars are closer and some are far away. So you see some yellow swirls. Sometimes it's a little hard to see these things on a video. And I'm going to leave some white in between the yellow swirls. And then I'm going to take all the different shades of blue that I have. I happen to have some light blue and some dark blue. And I'm going to make um, some swirly lines, but I'm going to go behind my moon. I don't want to go on top of it and come out the other side and maybe go over this star and around this one. And I'm going to repeat some of those swirly lines, but I'm going to go behind my stars. I don't want to cover the stars up. There we go. Make some more. And in here, I'm going to make a big swirl. Very windy out there. And here comes my big surprise. <laughs> Look at that. Ooh, it's a ghost in the wind. And that's my little surprise, my little Halloween surprise in my picture. Let's see if you can see this better. Okay, so I have some medium blue, and then I'm going to add some dark blue. I'm going to make my ghost's eyes and mouth nice and bright. And I'm going to be sure to get some more lines in here behind my stars to show that it's a windy night. When I was a kid, I used to live in New Jersey. And by Halloween, it was very cold and windy out there. I remember one, one Halloween we were out and it even started to rain, but we wouldn't give up. We were not going to miss that chance to get our candy. I remember that very, very much when I went to the dentist a few months later because I had cavities from all that candy. So if you get a lot of candy, please be sure to brush your teeth lots and lots because you don't want to go to the dentist and have to get fillings in your teeth. Okay, so I'm going with another shade of blue and I'm going to make some more lines. Whoops, I went over a star. Did not want to do that. Watch out for your stars. And we can fill in our whole paper. If you were painting this, then you 
or if you were using uh, oil pastels, you could actually use a white crayon in there, a white uh, oil pastel. Or if you were doing um, with watercolor, some of you might have some watercolors at home, you could take your blue watercolor and go over all of the sky and your crayons would pop out. That's called crayon resist. So you could do a crayon resist and take your watercolor and go over all of this blue with blue water with watercolor paint and all of your crayons would pop out. So for those of you who happen to have some watercolor at home, you could experiment with that on your own. But just in case we're just dealing with crayons and paper, this is going to be a beautiful picture. I think it's capturing the Van Gogh style very well. So we go in here with some light blue and um, I'm going to fill in down here with some light blue. How are you doing? Wish I could see all your pictures. I can imagine they're beautiful. Down here at the bottom, we're going to look at our picture again and see. I think we're going to be using some browns and greens and black. Oh, and blue, actually. Van Gogh did a lot of blue, some solid, some lines. You see how he liked to paint with lots of lines. That was part of his style. So down here we have greens and yellows. Here we have blues. So we can have some layers. If you wanted to get really detailed, you could include some houses. Here he has a church and he has some houses in here. If you wanna keep it simple, we could just do um, some different layers. Here we have our top of the mountain black line that now is behind the trees. And then we could put a second line different than the first one, going in different directions. And even a third one if you want. Try to deliberately go in different directions. And that way we could include like Van Gogh some very, very dark blue. I might even use like this purple. Let me see what that looks like. Oh, that's not even dark. Holy mackerel. Okay, let's see. Just don't know what any of these blues are going to look like until you try them out. Ay, ay, ay. Okay. So, let me see. What else do I have in my crayon dish here? No hope. Okay. This is as dark as mine is going to get. If I was using watercolor, I could really get a lot of dark, dark paint in here. But um, I'm just going to make this upper layer of the mountain go along the, shade, uh, the shape of those lines. But then I'm going to do like Van Gogh did. In the next section, I'm going to use another shade of blue. I'm going to um, make sure my trees come down to the line here. And now I'm going to take the other shade of blue that I had and I'm gonna make those lines like he did. He made like slanting lines here. I think maybe he was trying to show that there were things planted, you know, like rows of vegetables, because this was farmland, so he had some vegetables. And you could um, use some slightly curvy, that go, go with the curve here and then 
go down to the next black line. Now it's starting to look like farmland, right? And I could mix a green in between that because there are plants in there. So we're going to use a little green in between the blues. You could make it like alternating, like a pattern. Green, blue, green, blue. You could leave a little bit of white here and there. It doesn't have to be exact. And I try to make a little bit of curve in my lines because that makes a, my, um, my design more exciting. Okay, let me show you a little close up there. So you see the top section is going sideways along the line here. But this section is going diagonally down into the middle section. And then in the bottom section, you can do more green and yellow. And if you want to, you include a couple houses. Um, let me see. If I have a brown here that I could use for some houses. They're really little houses because, because um, they're far, far away. So we don't want to make them too big. And I don't know, you don't want to put too many or maybe you want to put a lot. It's your picture. You can make it the way you want. Okay? Um, I might even include a church like he did. Here's the steeple of the church right there. And um, then there's the building right here. And some windows. And here the church is a little bit bigger down here. And I put a door in my church for the people to come in. Okay, so I uh, probably want to make the church a different color. Um, I think I'll just um, kind of use my black lightly to make it a little bit kind of gray. Unless you happen to have a gray crayon. There you go. There's the church. And there are the houses. Maybe the people painted their houses different colors. So I'm going to make a brown roof. And then I might just make um, their house a different color. What color would you paint your house? I'm going to make this a blue house. And I think I'll make this other house some kind of a, of a beige color. Okay, so now I'm going to do all greens and all brown down at the bottom. Let me see what kind of colors Van Gogh used. I don't have to do it just like Van Gogh, but I'm looking here. Oh, look at he has another design down here, like bushes. There are bushes growing around these buildings. So he has some half circles or curvy lines, really curvy lines. Oh, the church was white. There you go. And we're going to fill in the bottom with green and yellow and um, curvy lines. Okay, so... Okay, I'm going to make like really strong curvy lines. I like to include a lot of different line designs in my pictures. 
because they make them more interesting. I think Van Gogh did that too. You know, before Van Gogh, most of the painters were making things look very real, almost like a photograph. Before 1800, I don't think they had cameras. In 1800, there were cameras and Van Gogh said, well, if you want something to look real, just go out and take a picture, right? With your camera. So art is more for him about showing feeling. What does it feel like? He wanted people to feel the wind. He wanted them to see how bright and shiny the stars were and make it exciting and um, put some emotion into it. So he um, decided not to make things look just as they are in a photograph. So he um, used his colors very, very bright, and he used his lines a little on the wild side. People were going like, what is going on with that Van Gogh? That's not what people expected. In fact, they were just so appalled. They didn't know what to think about his paintings, and very few people bought his paintings. And he died at a very young age, and after he died, all of a sudden, people said, you know what, that artwork that Van Gogh did, that was just amazing. And they started buying it, and now his paintings are worth millions and millions of dollars. But when he was a young artist out there in the middle of the night with a lantern looking at the sky and the, and the trees, he was all by himself and nobody cared about his artwork but he was enjoying it and it was showing what he felt so i'm going to put a little more light blue in here in my ghost eyes and um, still going to leave some white but just going to put a little more light blue in there and you could even put a bat if you wanted to put some bats in there, you could do that. But I think we'll do another lesson another day about bats because they have really special design shapes in them. Look at that. Here is my Van Gogh Halloween night. I wonder if he was out there on a Halloween night. There you go. Look at those different shapes and line designs that we have in our picture. I hope you enjoyed this lesson and have a good Halloween. Have a lot of fun this fall and enjoy all the fall colors and all the fall themes. And I'll be back with you another day and we'll do a lesson about drawing bats. Okay? Bye-bye.